Hello, everyone. This is Lam. Today, I'm going to do something different. First of all, I'm going to use these colors. It has a lot of greens in it because I want to play up the greens this time. I'm usually not a green person, but I want to try something different. So I put a white base coat down, and I just want to do something new and free. I don't know what. At this point, I haven't decided what technique I'm going to use yet. I am just going to wing it, and thinking just laying out a cup, and then see how it goes. I just want to splatter paint all over and see what happens. So I layer the cup in my usual manner. Oh, and actually, I did something different in this batch of paint. Two of my colors are actually watercolors, not acrylic paint. I use Master's Touch watercolors because they are on sale half off in Hobby Lobby. So I, you know, I was thinking, okay, some watercolors are transparent, and I love transparent paint. So I got a purple and a blue that. Are marked as transparent, so I just mix them up in water, and then I put it in my usual pouring medium, and I'll see how that works. To me, paint transparency is very important. I like to use some transparent paints and some semi-transparent and some opaque, so that there will be all kinds of different. Layers and effect, and there is a、uh, some perception of depth. If we use all opaque paint, then it will be very flat. But if we use all transparent, then it will be kind of a little bit too too much going on. So I like it all kinds. Okay, I'm going to just splatter it around. One, two, three. Ooh, look at that. Okay, the green came out first, and then the blue, and then the purple slowly drizzled out. So they are blobs of colors and some purple doodles. Interesting. Now, what do I do with it? Hmm, should I tilt it first or should I torch it first? Okay, first, add some more white, cover the edges. Doesn't look like I have enough white paint left. I'll do my best. And then it may be a good time to torch. And it looks like the watercolors are holding up pretty well. Hmm. Now what do I do next? What technique should I use? Okay, I haven't done this for a long time. I found my mallet. And I started hammering. There. This is actually one of the techniques that I used a lot when I first started pouring, but I haven't done it in a long time, so I didn't know how it would come out. These smallest brushes can be very pretty, but they are also very unpredictable. And I have never done it before. I tilt out the paint, so I really didn't know how it would behave. But so far, so good. I like the sides when, when I have just a little bit of paint on the mallet and and hammer it on the on the white. It makes such pale shapes. I think that's very pretty. Too bad they won't last because they are on the edges. When I tilt it all out, they a lot of that would go away. But anyway, I'm just hammering away, 
And I really like the middle. It looks like there are some fruits or some tomatoes or something. So I hammer some more, but try not to disturb the tomatoes. Oops, a little bit there. Okay, time to chill. I'm really liking the shapes of the smashes. They look like leaves, especially I have so much green there. And okay, I hope the tomatoes will keep their shapes. Because you never know with tilting, a lot of things can get bent out of shape. Uh, 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 uh. Well, if they don't stay, then I'll do something else with it. But I hope they stay because they look so cute. Okay, there's a... Uh, the paint looks a little thick, but I don't want to disturb the fruits too much. Hmm. It's really hard to decide because on the one hand, I am liking the composition right now as is. But on the other hand, the paint is so thick. Um, I don't think it will crack, but it may not dry flat. So, hmm, should I tilt it out some more? Or should I just leave it? Because if I tilt it more, it can ruin everything. Hmm. Think, think, think. Well, I think I'll take a little rest. Okay, taking tiny wrists. And if things go too far off shape, I'll come back. Okay, I think that's enough. I think that's the best I can do. Let me see if the fruit will come back to more of a center instead of all the further up. Okay, that's good. I think I'll just leave it like this. Okay, final torch. I'm really liking the way it looks now. It looks kind of messy, but it is a different style. Very, very, very different from everything I have done in the past. So I like that. Because every time we try a new style, it's a risk. But I like the colors. I like how the shapes are formed. The leaves and the fruit. I, I am seeing blue tomatoes, but they could be blueberries. Who knows? Okay, so I'll call it done. And I hope it dries well. Okay, what was I doing? Oh, I was trying to tilt it some more. No, don't do that. See, after the fact, when I look back, I wonder what I was thinking. But it looks like I finally came to my senses and stopped right here while I still could. So here it is. It's done. It's a new style, totally different from what I have ever done. And I find it interesting, and I want to explore it some more. Here is the close-up, and look at the color distribution. It is messy, but in an interesting way. And I really like how the colors came out, and I like the fruit. And I think the watercolors hold up very well. So I am glad I like this painting. Now come take a look at the dry result. Look, it dries beautifully. I'm so glad and pleasantly surprised too. But I think that's where the GAC 800 came in. Because with the paint so thick, if I didn't put any of the GAC in, 
that would be crazing. That means the pain would dry with ripples, but now it's beautifully flat. I quite like the finish. And this piece is now listed in my Etsy shop, and the link is in the description box. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for your support. I appreciate all my subscribers and my viewers. You have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.